Uh, this panel is ready to go in. I'm just, at the moment, just doing a trial fit to work out how the silicon, where the silicon is going to go and how I'm going to fit it without disturbing the silicon so I can put it on there and offer it up. Okay, we'll only get on because it application of silicone. Nice little bead. The joints. And a that's a temporary. Fixing a further panel. Being a high performance engine, it's common to balance the conrods end over end. This normally needs a very expensive and accurate scale that will weigh to within a gram. But because we're not bothered about actual weight, only balance, I've made up a simple balance sheet. But for this to work, it's got to be dead level. It's cheap um, spirit level there. Doesn't matter how accurate it is, because you put it on one way. Turn it around as long as the bubble's in the same spot, that's fine. So I've put conrods on there. Note how they tip down. So that proves this end's heavier. But so I know how much metal to take off, I've got some washers. I just put put those on. This gives me an indication of how much metal I've got to remove. Try it with a couple. Pretty much balance there, it probably needs three. There you are, it's nearly balanced. So now I've got to remove some metal from this end and come back trial and error. Using um, another jig, I can bolt that in there, bolt that in there, do the little ends as well. Uh, recent jobs have been to put the wiring in. It goes down the inside of the transmission tunnel held in with rubber lined stainless clips. I'm using stainless steel rather than say plastics. It could get quite hot down there and I don't want any plastic ones to melt so the stainless will hold everything in securely. Right. Uh, the petrol pipes come from the petrol tank again along the inside of the chassis rail again held in with stainless P clips rubber lined but the petrol pipes also covered with the heat reflective wrapping to protect. Yeah. There's more wiring around here. These are ignition packs for the engine, ignition side of things. More wiring held in with stainless P clips. Okay, there's a few tie wraps, but if they do melt, it's not a problem. Everything's held in. Uh, this is the petrol tank in position. We've got the filler down there. There's electrical connection. Fuel out of the tank. That's a return line. This one's going to be a breather. These are the rear wings before they went to the moulding shop. Right, this is the bonnet, and underneath it is the mould for the bonnet. This is in a mixture of carbon fibre and glass fibre. It's extremely light. That's my little finger that I'm lifting that up with. It's also got a very good finish on it. Underneath it's just raw carbon, so that won't need painting. This is my boot lid. The blue is the release agent, that'll just wash off with water. Again, carbon fibre. Again, very, very light. This is, that's the mould, this is the front panel. This is in um, glass fibre, but we just allowed carbon over the top for look, so it matches all the other components. Still very light, still very stiff. Right, this is the mould for the boot. That's the uh, inside, nice, clean and shiny. On the outside, it's quite rough, but it doesn't matter, it doesn't need anything else. This is called the core mat. They just put that on to stiffen it up. It's big the mould for the front panel. These are the rear wings before they went to the moulding shop. At the moment, I'm fitting the bonnet 
It's going to be held on with quarter turn Zeus fasteners. And I'm making little attachment brackets for these, for those. They go in there by a pre swaged stamped backing plate. It's held on with hinges as well. They're going to be quick release. The pins will be removable so I can remove the bonnet. And there's going to be quite a few of these brackets. The Zeus fasteners can be one there, around here, air outlet. One in the middle, a couple at the back, and one in the back corner. Recently I've been working on the air inlet for the front grille. I've mounted the front grille to the body. That area there is for the air filter. That's just another air inlet for if I need any cool air. This is the ducting for the radiator. Radiuses on each corner. Now this air inlet here is half the size of the actual radiator so the air goes through and then expands and slows down. There's also a little diffuser vane there to direct the air upwards. This is the uh, back side of the radiator. Again it's critical for the air to find its way out. Most people just force air through the radiator and leave it to find its own way out. So that's the air duct there, and then this bit also sits on. And then that goes up out of the, the bonnet. Because there, there's a big hole there and it's going to be open in the bonnet, rain will come in. So I made a little rain channel that will fix down there to divert the water off and then it will drain out. The headlights are mounted as well. They're mounted on the basic spotlight unit, it's mounted on this plate. Big bolt underneath and a ball joint there. This means I can get set the angle of the headlight and then if I need to take it out, all I've got to do is undo the three bolts and I don't actually alter the alignment. Up here that's one of the air outlets or ducts. Pipe can go on there, go anywhere in the car I want it. Bolting the suspension on. This has got what well, I think is quite a clever design. You know, it's got these two plates and the spacers. What it means by altering the size of these plates and the spacers, I can put that suspension pivot point exactly wherever I want. I can put it out here if I wanted, I could put it there, put it here. Also means that when I've built the chassis, the chassis is distorted with weld, welding and heat. But now the position of all these suspension pickup points is up to within a millimeter because I could put them exactly where I wanted by making the plates to suit. If I have a crash, these plates are designed to shear, hopefully break off and leave the chassis intact. Slightly more complicated and I've got more bolts and that extra weight, but it means I've got adjustability. As it's my first time of designing suspension, I can now, if I find it's not right, I can alter the geometry, put the pickup points in another place. This is the brake pedal very solid, stout, so I've got good precise braking. That feeds into twin master cylinders, mounted on the floor, low down for the weight. Most rally cars, they mount them up on the bulkhead. That's bad because the weight's high, I put them low. Get every little bit counts. You've got the pipes here feeding to the reservoirs at the back. They run down the chassis rail. The reservoirs again, at the back of the car and low for weight distribution. Again, most people mount them in the bulkhead in the engine bay. Uh, these are the reservoirs mounted at the back. Good for weight distribution. Most people mount them in the engine bay, but that's bad because it's high and weight forward. I've mounted them low and at the back. Uh, this is the brake proportioning valve. It's quite a clever item that it restricts pressure to the rear end, but doesn't do it linearly. What it means is it in the dry, you need different brake proportion front to back because in the dry you've got more grip, more weight transfer. In the wet, there's less grip, so less weight transfer means you need more braking at the rear. So under low pedal pressures, i.e. the wet, it sends 50-50 front to back. Under high pedal pressures, where you're going to be braking hard, it restricts quite a lot of the pressure to the rear, so more goes to the front.